We've worked really hard to create out of season play plans and worked with the National Federation of High School, looking at bylaws, seeing what was allowed in each state and giving people ideas that do work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, here's an interesting thing. So I have a friend in Kansas and uh, he's a tennis pro who would really love to support high school tennis in Kansas. The only problem is that state is highly prohibitive of the players doing anything else at all outside of their high school team. So they're, they even have rules in place where you can't train elsewhere. You can't, you can't play a tournament on the weekend. That sounds hard. So so hopefully as a national committee, you can kind of get in touch with these states and, and, you know, help, help with that effort to loosen things up so there can be more collaboration. You know, I mean, I know in Texas, you have to be a teacher at the school in order to coach. And there are positives Mm -hmm. about that, but a little more liberality in terms of allowing you know, tennis professionals and other enthusiasts to come in as walk-ons, you know, to assist with programs. I mean, that could, that could really boost things up as well. So, um, so now you, a moment ago, you talked about. I think you're seeing a change in Arizona. I feel like two years ago, they opened things up a lot more out of season, but here the kids were always allowed to play in the USTA tournaments because it's a, Consider it an individual sport. So I think states are are seeing a lot of changes with this new, new era of kids, and it'll be interesting to see where it goes. But I know Arizona just recently, two years ago, made a quite a substantial change in it, and it'll we'll see where it goes across the nation. But mm-hmm. our committee researched all the bylaws. Luckily, I was not on that subcommittee. <laughs> to read 50 states bylaws on tennis and you know document everything um, but then uh, as we go out to help these states i think okay we we understand what they're dealing with rules wise yeah i think another piece of the problem of kids who don't play off season is is coaches who have a zero zero to 60 and 2.3 seconds mentality so um mm-hmm. you know i mean i've always heard the complaint not enough kids play off season, well, then your focus is in the wrong thing. Focus on the ones who do <laughs> and grow that number. So, you know, it, it could be the 80-20 rule forever, but, you know, let's take it to 79-21. My, my first year coaching at this one particular high school, you know, I had 28 kids on the team. And I invited a lot of them to come play in the summertime with me. And only five came. Only five. Mm-hmm. 23 did not. 23 did not. Right? But no, I didn't worry about the 23. Right? I, I poured myself into the Why? fight. And then they became the nucleus of our undefeated team the next year. And then guess what happened the next summer? You know, we had 15 kids. More kids. So, I mean, and then right. I'll, I'll give you another one. One time in the summertime, I was, I was coaching a lot of high school kids who'd come to me as the private coach. So they came from numerous schools. And all season long, all summer, I was pumping up the fact that, hey, in the middle of July, we're going to go to a world team tennis match. World team tennis match. World team tennis. I mean, every week, I pumped it up, pumped it up, pumped it up, you know, Everybody nodded and smiled, and it made it seem like we were going to have some kids going. And I got some, I got some chaperones, you know, because I thought we were going to have <laughs> kids, right? And two kids went. And then the whole thing was, are you going to cancel? Are you going to cancel? Are you going to cancel? And I'm like, no, we're not going to cancel. So three chaperones yep. took two kids to go see world team tennis and what happened they had an amazing time came back told everybody about how fun it was and then then and made them jealous and then the next year we had a really a big turnout right so and i think that's kind of what we're dealing with in today's world 
I think a lot of these kids are very overprogrammed uh, academically, with charity work, college applications, SAT prep classes. They're, they're juggling so much more than I ever dealt with in high school. You know, so you look at the time factor and, you know, there's a lot of different things going on in their lives, I, I feel now. They yeah. were competing for their time. And so we need to make it as fun as we can that they want to be with us. 